Yeah, uh, I have just started the recording. So let me do a quick recap of the things that we have done so far. So we are good with the introduction and getting started with AWS. Uh, so in that, in that we talked about uh, the various nitty gritties involving uh, uh, the cloud vendors like Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. And uh, we specifically talked about Amazon Web Services, what all services we are going to cover and uh, what type of cloud computing models we are going to study. I informed you about uh, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service. Now, the next one is Amazon EC2. So EC2 is the uh, <clears throat> the virtual server in the cloud. EC2 is the name given to the virtual server in the cloud in AWS. So we saw how to create one Microsoft EC2, how to create the Linux. We discussed uh, security groups, key pairs, and uh, all the nitty gritties uh, involving EC2. We developed one EC2 instance using command line interface. And after that, we moved to storage services and uh, AWS CLI. So AWS CLI was basically covered in Amazon EC2 itself. Now in storage services, we talked about the various services like uh, we begin with Elastic Block Store. First of all, we discussed the, the options that were there in traditional storage. Like every time we, uh, we needed some storage, we had to go to the market purchase the hardware stuff and in that hardware we need to upload the things uh, which was quite expensive but now the things have changed and uh, we can just uh, borrow some space one terabyte space on google drive or dropbox and uh, s3 is one of them dropbox uses uh, s3 only so that's that's really good it has changed uh, the outlook of storage. Now, we talked about EBS, that is Elastic Block Store, which is persistent in nature, irrespective of the fact whether EC2 instance is running or not. You can uh, disconnect it from the server and plug it in in an other server. All right. So that's how good is uh, EBS. So in EBS, we discussed uh, general purpose SSD, provisioned IOPS and magnetic. Magnetic is hardly or rarely used, but we talked about general purpose and uh, uh, provisioned IOPS. Then after that, we moved on to S3, that is simple storage service and uh, Simple storage service does not require to be attached to an EC2 instance. It's standalone, just like Dropbox. You can access it from your computer and uh, it comes with the three storage options. That is standard storage, infrequent access and uh, reduced redundancy storage. So reduced redundancy storage is intermediate. Then uh, the most efficient is uh, standard storage and uh, the third one is infrequent access storage okay then fourth we discussed glacier glacier is uh, really least expensive and uh, it's used for the archival purpose so i told you that uh, the use case scenarios would be like government offices wherein one file needs to be accessed every four years or so so glacier is the right option because they really uh, don't want to spend a lot of money okay so glacier is really cheap and but it's really time consuming even to upload a small amount of file it takes around four hours okay now so after that we uh, after completing glacier we looked into storage gateway aws storage gateway so in storage gateway we discussed uh, the hybrid cloud wherein some of the data is there on the data center uh, so two two options we discussed one was uh, uh, frequent accessed storage wherein the cache cache data was uh, put the entire data was put on s3 and uh, the frequently accessed data was put in the data center okay so the other case was in storage gateway uh, was uh, upload buffer wherein the entire data was uploaded to the data center and uh, then moved on to the various clients so those two scenarios were discussed one was cache in gateway cache uh, we discussed about uh, upload buffer and cache storage so we are here till now any questions any queries if uh, you have caught, please let me know.